This video is brought to you by simplysafe.com. We'll talk more about that later. It is a dreary day here in Los Angeles as we are working on all the things necessary to get this chassis to do an all wheel drive burnout. I've been wanting to recreate Jim Kind of Seven iconic moment for so long. We'll go through all the things I need to finish to get this thing to do that. And the reason that matters so much is I need your guys' help. There's a couple pieces I can't locate, so I figured, you know, why not use the internet powers for good. Speaking of that, I wanna tell you guys a little bit of a side story about one of the dumbest things I've done in a long time. The reveal and release of this car has been so crazy, so awesome, that even if there was one minor setback, I guess it's okay. But this one was done out of stupidity, my own stupidity. I have the Honda Insight in here because I wanna show you what I just learned. Somebody broke into the Insight and stole the spare clutch for the four rotor. The one that you saw in the videos where I was showing you that it has a thicker flywheel. This clutch in all of its glory. Oh, uh, there we are. Man, those guys did not mess around getting us this ASAP. This is beautiful. Let's take a look at the flywheel differences, which is still white by almost all standards. Let me run you through what I realized I did and how to avoid getting your stuff stolen. I used the Honda Insight as a daily driver, even though the CTS-V was my daily driver in Michigan. This is just a fun, simple car. I love beating the crap out of it. If somebody door dings it, we're good. I drove it all the way to Vegas and back. One take in gas, you can understand why I love this thing. And left the clutch in the back, basically advertising people to steal it. It's dumb because you can even still see the remnants of it, the little placard that the guys made from X Clutch. I'm an idiot because I, I, I'm gonna tell you guys straight up. I had, you know, looked in the back of the car and go, huh. It's just sitting, like a halo. It's just sitting there saying, hey, somebody take me. It was sitting right in the middle, just waiting there. And I got lazy and left it in there. I was just a little overwhelmed. I have no other excuses. I went to the car after pulling an all-nighter editing that huge 96-hour video. That's the worst part is that the, the clutch got stolen while I was near the car, sitting editing. I go to grab my driver's door and it's already open. It was like this. It was like, like that first click. It was just there. And I was like, uh, I lock my cars religiously. Even if they auto lock, I'm very obsessive about this. So I was, I felt very betrayed that the car got broken into. The alarm, nothing went off. I would have heard it. Even though my trust was betrayed out there, I still feel very safe in the shop. Nothing's perfect, but I sure as hell feel covered with having Simply Safe in the shop. As you guys have seen, it's a partnership I've had this year and it has been one of the greatest because as a person who is very much alone a lot, this gives me the sort of comfort and safety knowing that everything's comprehensively watched after. I know that there aren't any fires going on. There isn't a water break. I think it's finally time for me to install the doorbell sensor. This takes almost no time for me to set up and it's my own fault that I didn't set that up because the car is sitting right in front of where the doorbell would look. Especially if there was a break in, this would have been recording as well. Simply Safe is adding even more features to their already full system. This would have been really handy when I went back home because I forgot my keys here. You don't need keys to get into your own house. It's even easier. You could unlock it online or even with a touchpad on the outside. That has given me complete peace of mind for protecting my little castle here. Right now, Simply Safe is having the largest sale of the year. Protect your home and family with Simply Safe. Make sure to check it out quickly because this sale ends Cyber Monday. That's simplysafe.com slash robdom to check all of that out. A beautiful quad plate clutch and flywheel combination that really only works for this car. That's the funny part is that you can steal it. Uh, it's not really going to help uh, anybody other than me. You'd have to know exactly what you're getting yourself into. So the worst part about it being stolen is that it's probably never going to be used because the person who stole it probably isn't an RX-7 enthusiast. How did they break into my car? This is a lesson for those of you that use your car like I do. I, you know, I work out, I try to. Uh, I take showers at the gym. It's a very easy, lightweight way to live my life. As a mild way of being lazy, if you leave your towel in your gym bag, that becomes absolute World War III thermonuclear uh, gross biological warfare. I take the towel out and I just throw it under the passenger seat. It's a lazy guy thing, whatever. And let the sun the next day bake it in. It drives it out. The thing I do is I crack the window. I still lock the car, crack the window, life is good. That's where I made my simple mistake. On this car, if you crack the window, you can actually get to the unlocking mechanism it is a toggle switch. Look at this, check this out. That's it, lock and unlock the car. I had never in a million years thought this was possible, but it is a logical situation where you can actually lock the car, leave, get out of the car, lock it. It's like a Slim Jim, you could use just a simple piece of even welding rod and just hook that and pull it up. 
and it unlocks it from the inside of the car because you have the window cracked. All of my bounty inside of it is now legally yours. I'll show you guys a couple more pictures I clutch. Be on the lookout for this. I highly doubt it'll ever make it anywhere because it's so unique. It's obviously identifiable. It's rare There's, and it doesn't work for the vast majority of cars. So I suspect it's probably gonna gather dust somewhere and not even I get the benefit of it. So that's a bummer because I'm now out the cost of that second clutch. I was supposed to return it got lazy and this is what I get for that. That is just a quick uh, public world announcement. Sometimes the internet bears some really wild fruit, but let's move forward. We've got so many good things to talk about. Let's talk about what needs to be done on this. As you can tell, the car is currently low. That is low. That is the height of the car with the splitter that, you know, it's gonna be a thicker splitter to handle all of the downforce. It's gonna bottom out right there. That means that Isaiah now can build the intercooler piping to that specification. We did get this pump all mounted in properly. It's really nice. I need to get some more AN fittings to make that work. The steering is absolutely atrocious, but with the new alternator, that might help. Regardless, I need to move the steering over to get more of a straight line, and I have no more over to go because that's where the, the bump steering starts to come into play. So I might have to get a different steering rack for that. That's also a powered steering rack. Uh, I think I'm gonna go electric power assist up there. So that whole system's getting reworked. Isaiah needs to take the exhaust manifold off. We're gonna put all the exhaust gas temp sensors on there because as soon as we start adding boost, now we need to accommodate for each of the rotors being different temperatures. I'm also swapping all of my injectors and adding my second rail in. So we get E85. If we're gonna be tuning the car, might as well get the correct injector set up. Uh, that'd be kind of a waste of time to have the wrong one set up. Right now it's basically mirroring my old three rotor setup. I really, I'm telling myself this, I don't believe this, but I, I really do need brakes. Uh, I don't have them on the car, even though I can stop with the handbrake and that's really sick. That's a quick wire up in my opinion. I need to modify my dry sump tank. It's got a 12 AN in and that is just not adequate. That's part of the reason why the system was causing back pressure through the turbo. All of that was 12 AN. We gutted most of it to 16. That is the last piece. Here is the most important thing that makes this possible is the all wheel drive system. That's called Atteza, A-T-T-E-S-A. All in caps. That is the system that Nissan used in their GTR R32, 33, and 34. I need the pump. I need the nitrogen filled reservoir. I need, there's a whole system for that, and I need it because I want to control it like the OEM system and then take it a step further. I don't want to recreate all of that. So if you know of somebody who has an Atezza system, the pump, the pump assembly, it gets really corroded because it's in a bad spot on the car. But if you know somebody that has one of those for sale, or if you're willing to steal it, hey, you know what, somebody stole my clutch, might as well pay it forward. Just kidding, just kidding. If you know somebody that's willing to part with theirs, please let me know, so that way I have a clean setup for here. Interesting thing is the Atezza system on the R32 works different than the R33 and R34. The Atezza system on the later models, the specifically the R34 and 33 works slightly different than Godzilla's. Godzilla's is just a zero PSI, you go and you have to prime the system to get all wheel drive. The newer ones work slightly different and they prime this system. A couple PSI to where you've got basically 90% of your power in the back and a little bit floating in the front. So that way, once you need all wheel drive, once you need to get that traction, the system is already primed, you know, pre-primed, ready to go. Because apparently it takes the same amount of time to go from zero to 10% as it does to go from 10% to 50%. Interesting, I, I'll take any of those systems. They all ultimately act the same. If you guys listened to the very end of the first drive video where Isaiah's getting lost in the sauce, playing with the camera angles and all that with the water on the windshield, you would have heard me mention 130 degrees. And that has to do with the fact that even after more than a half hour of constant running and revving and playing with it, the oil system never got over 130 degrees. There are multiple solutions. One is to actually get a heater that's cool, that works. Bypass, thermostats, all that sort of thing. But I do think I'm just going to take this cooler and cu couple these lines so the cooler's not involved. May come in useful when we go for full tilt, but for now, we're doing more damage than good being too cool. We need to get both of the wastegates welded in and plumbed to the front of the turbo. We're also gonna get this wheel speed sensor so we know what the turbo wheel speed is. We also need to get the whole belt system figured out. There's definitely a pulley, a tensioner pulley for sure. The problem is the alternator and the oil pump are both cocked at a slight angle. So I'm, I'm gonna do that one myself. I got more argon, so I can just start tacking that those in and fix the mounting holes because the holes are not you know, tight. And so things start bending in the way of the belt. 
which causes the belt to be loose and you guys see what you see. I need to get larger springs. That's something I just need to order. I haven't had a chance to do that. That way it's more appropriate at the correct ride height. We did get the turbo mounted both underneath it and on the side of it because this is going to be a violent ride. This is going to be ripping around turns and we did not want this hot exhaust manifold to be forced by the weight of the turbo, the mass of the turbo, to be bent in and out and start heat cycling and causing issues. That is now locked into place. I need to get the dash wired in. The dash is not wired in right now, so I can't really tell the health check, a vibe check very quickly. So it's ready to be. I've got all the settings in it, but I just need to power it up and get that connected to the master system. If we're gonna be doing burnouts, that fan was just used as a temporary test. There is one that is slightly larger and flows twice as many CFM, cubic feet per minute. We'll start there and then improve as we go. A lot of questions about the floor and the body of the car, and neither of those concern me to do an all-wheel drive burnout. Those are goals after the fact. We have the doors, with the front bumper, all the fenders, all that sort of stuff. It does go back on after the engine comes out to go for the full power dyno. That's gonna be done at, I think, Mountain. Actually, not too far from here. Car then will get all of its work done on the body so you don't get dust and fiberglass in the critical air inlets and oil inlets and all that sort of stuff. The goal is to try and be a YouTuber and effectively split my time. Don't worry about all that stuff, especially considering I love having the car be that open. That is personally something I enjoy. That's I'm dragging my feet uh, figuratively, not literally. I'm putting a floor in the car.